GT9600 would be compared to now of that of a GTX 1060. Something that you can pay a little bit of money for above that little 50% margin to give you great bang for your buck performance. The 9600 GT, for the time it was being, was no slouch. At 64 CUDA cores, 512 megabytes of DDR3, well this specific variant that is, uh, 650 core megahertz on the core, and 900 megahertz on the memory. Nothing too fancy, 57.6 gigabytes per second. It sounds like I'm reading off a spec page to which you would be correct. It did require a 400 watt power supply medium uh, minimum and a six pin power to the card. So it wasn't exactly quote unquote power efficient, which we wouldn't expect it to be considering it came out in 2009. So this card is rapidly approaching to be eight years old. What does this mean? Can it still be played against modern titles and play decently? Is it even worth picking up if you can find it for a good price? Well, I guess you'll just have to find out. So again, with today's testing, we will be using my system with the i7-4790K at stock and a PNY 9600 GT, 512 megabytes DDR3, mind you, a H100i 2.0 truck of RAM, and SSD on SSD to really el eliminate any potential bottleneck. Not that there's going to be any, but just so you guys know. So I was actually having trouble. Um, due to the age of this card, it's really not compatible with any DirectX 11 titles such as Battlefield 4, GTA, hell even GTA 4. But that could also be due to it only having a, mind you, 512 megabyte frame buffer. So I decided to play some games that could actually run so we can have some kind of idea of how this card could perform. And I thought something that would be somewhat widely played would be um, Minecraft. As you see, I'm doing the uh, TNT test. I did not know how many places I put down, but that's a 9 by 4 So if you do a wee bit of math, that would be 36 pieces of TNT simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously exploding. That would be much more difficult to do, but um, exploding off. And the settings that I am running now is absolute ultra and I tried to show you the frame rate keep in mind it's at the top left corner right underneath the title Minecraft it does spike it can be anywhere from 60 to 200 all the way down to 30 or 2 in my opinion that's not playable and I don't exactly expect it to be due to the age of this card not to mention the 512 megabyte frame buffer if you look at the uh, top right you can see how fast this game can take uh, one gig away from your graphics card and those stutters were due to the max memory overload of the card so then i put it down to settings that i thought would be much more suitable for this card the normal settings fast settings 12 um render chunks no uh smooth lighting uh decreased particles and now it's hovering over the hundreds at all time yes i do know that this game is also cpu intensive but this card assuming that you would have one this is just a no bottleneck situation at all this showing you the max potential of this card next up we do have team fortress 2 running at the highest settings possible um, I couldn't use uh, cam software fraps or Nvidia Shadowplay to show any kind of frame rate and I was unaware of any other method to do so um, no matter what it did the toggles or anything it would not show up from what it looked like though it was looking like it was hovering in the 50s upper 40s 50s it was kind of laggy um, I was having a little bit of trouble. Um, this was done in 720p, mind you. Ultra settings. Um, all tests today were done in 720p, if I haven't already said that. But this is what went interesting. It stopped working. The GT9600, I bought new when it was out for $200. And it's been taken great care of. It was only used for a year until I upgraded to a GTX 260. So, what could have caused this to happen? No idea. I try to go to the back, see what I can do, uh, rejiggle the uh, DVI cable. This is two DVI um, outputs. Nothing would work. I go behind the monitor, try and tighten that one as well. Nothing would happen. It was working fine, and then it just stopped. 
And this is the risk that you must take into account when purchasing or using used hardware. Yes, this is a very isolated test or case for that matter, but this is something that you can run into nevertheless. Due to the situations and possibly the use of your card, you will degrade the life of it. Even when it was new and I was using it every day, I didn't even bother with overclocking. It's just something that you want to really take into mind when you're purchasing used hardware. How long do you plan on using it and what do you plan on using it for? You need to understand that if you put a little bit of money in, you might not get exactly what you're expecting. Sure, it's an NVIDIA product, product and it might have been high quality when it was out, but that was years ago and possibly outdoing its intended use. I tried rejiggling the DVI cable, the fan was still spinning, um, I don't know. I'm not mad at all actually, this is more of a good thing because now we get to see firsthand, mid benchmark, what could happen when they're using used hardware. So I'm sorry for the lack of content in today's video, of course you saw how it died, yes this is a risk that we all take when using used hardware or purchasing it. Please be aware of what you're buying. If you guys like this kind of stuff, please like, subscribe, and I'll be making sure to come out with more. See you in the next one.